In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Our Lady, Queen of the Angels, Saint Joseph, our patron saints and guardian angels, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The reading has nothing to do with this first thing that jumps out at me in this reading for the gospel today is just the uh, inclusive language that is how we've taken, it always used to be if you didn't know the sex of the, of the noun, you used always the pronoun that was masculine. And here they have, he called a child over and placed it, placed it in their midst. It has become from him to it. <laughs> I just so depersonalized have we become with our trying to dance around the, this whole uh, feminist nonsense. Anyway, it, um, today we celebrate, though, the guardian angels, those who have been placed over us to watch over us, you know. We sometimes look at important people and like the president or some celebrity who has a entourage and a bunch of bodyguards surrounding them. We think, oh, they must be somebody very important. But each and every one of us has a heavenly bodyguard to watch over us from the time that we enter into this world. When we were created in our mother's womb, God assigned us a guardian angel to watch over us. And probably one of the most neglected persons in our lives, in our daily lives, is our guardian angel. How many times have we, if you look at it, and maybe you can count on one hand, have we made reference or made any kind of uh, communication to our guardian angel throughout our day? You know, besides saying the prayer, angel of, my, angel of God, my guardian dear, which sometimes we may say without really even paying any real attention to what we're asking in that prayer, but how many times have we turned to our guardian angel and asked him to help us or to assist us or just to, to watch over us in something that we're doing? Probably rarely do we ever make reference to him, and yet we... You know, we have this angelic being who's been given to us who has an intellect far superior to us. You know, next to God, it's, uh, you know, the in angelic intellect is, if, if we were to see the angelic being, we would, you know, like many in the Old Testament, they fell down because they thought they were in the presence of God. So lofty and grander are they, and we have been given an angelic being like that to watch over us, guard us, protect us, to lead us through this life. So many perils have we in this life that God has given us the right kind of bodyguard to direct us and to make sure that we get to our heavenly homeland. And one of the things that we maybe forget when we think about our guardian angels is that he's already passed the test. He's already proved his love for God. He's already proved that he is faithful to God. He doesn't have to, uh, to convince anyone uh, that he is for us or that he is with God and that he is our greatest ally in the, the struggle to, to arrive at our heavenly homeland. He's already proven that. He's passed the test of being uh, faithful to God and loving Him. And so we should, like Padre Pio, who encouraged all of his spiritual children, you know, to make use, to have frequent recourse to our guardian angels. Uh, after praying to Our Lady and asking her help, the next one we should turn to as our guardian angel and asking Him to assist us in whatever task it is we're doing. But especially, to assist us in those spiritual obligations that we have, you know, to accompany us at Mass, to help us to fight off distractions, to help us to uh, practice virtue, especially if we have someone difficult that we are going to meet with or we know that we're going to have 
uh, a difficulty with a tr one of our children who is a problem or is giving us, uh, you know, greater uh, need for patience, then we should pray to our guardian angel, but also to their guardian angel and ask them for their assistance, that all will go well, that all will go according to God's will. And um, even um, it is believed, and even scripture seems to make uh, an allusion to this, that not only do persons, individuals, have guardian angels, but also groups like countries, as we hear in the book of Daniel about the two angels representing the different nations, you know, they were having a, a, a um, discourse or an argument or uh, they were both trying to plead the cause of those that were under their care. But it is believed that parishes, uh, being an, a body of believers, that, that parishes may have guardian angels and even dioceses. Once they are formed, then God sends an angel to guide them and to watch over those uh, faithful gathered in those particular groups. Um, and we should um, maybe pray to our guardian angel that watches over this country of ours to assist uh, our nation to truly turn them back to God and to be faithful to him. But of course we look at our guardian angels and we know that on this day as the church reminds us of this truth that maybe today we should redouble our efforts to have recourse to our guardian angels, to pray to them, and not to, of course, become chummy, like, you know, to give him a name. Of course, we're not to name our guardian angels other than the name that he's been given by God, and that is angel of God, guardian angel, because we're not to name something higher than us, and the guardian angel is higher than us in uh, being. An angelic being is far superior to us, and we don't name things above us unless they reveal their name. Uh, but we are not to put a name on our guardian angel like Joe or, or Betty or whatever, because we don't know their names and it's not important for us to know their names, for us to have recourse to them. We'll find out their name when we get to heaven. And um, that is something that um, uh, we should look forward to. But presently we know that they love us and they assist us <clears throat> and they want us to get to heaven to be with them. Uh, they, they are truly uh, our, our great friends in our wanting to serve God. It is said even that priests at the day of their ordination get an extra guardian angel, so I'm probably doubly remiss in uh, turning to my associates and my friends in heaven to help me and to assist me in my duties. Let us today, as we honor the guardian angels, uh, ask their assistance and maybe dedicate ourselves more to, to, to being their loyal and being their, their obedient uh, subjects. They're there to help us and we should listen to them they're there to give us ready advice and guidance and, um, that, and that we should always be mindful of them when we go out in our journeys to ask them to watch over us and to protect us. And especially ask Our Lady, the Queen of the Angels, to help us to um, be faithful and loyal uh, to her as they are in serving her as well. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.